With just a few clicks, Comrade Stinger's asynchronous reprojection demo can make 30 frame per second gameplay look and feel like 240 frames per second. It's completely free, takes almost no additional system resources, and the effect is so convincing that we fooled even the most seasoned gamers in our office. We're still above 240. I'm gonna say 120. Yeah, I'm gonna say like 140, maybe even, maybe higher. I have no idea, this is cool. I don't know what you've done. Holy okay. <laughs> So that's your initial impression is? <laughs> Obviously fake, right? Haha, <laughs> April Fools, no, it's December. And asynchronous reprojection is not only real, but it's actually a mature technology. There are literally hundreds of games going back half a decade that are using this tech to boost perceived performance. They're just not the kind of games that you typically play on a monitor. But why not, right? The idea to use it on desktop came from Two Clicks Philip, and it's one of those ideas that is so brilliant in hindsight that it seems totally obvious. Like this segue to our sponsor, Ridge. Ridge Wallet has redefined the traditional wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. That's right, the bulge in your pants shouldn't be from your wallet. Use offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. You can download Comrade Stinger's Unity Project to play around with for yourself, and I would recommend that you do so. But first, let me explain what's going on here. This slider in the corner allows us to control the frame rate of our game, while the rest of these parameters are to apply and compare the performance and rendering tricks that make up asynchronous reprojection. Let's go a little slower this time. We'll start with native 240 FPS rendering. I know this isn't gonna fully come through in a YouTube video, but it looks smooth, right? It is. But let's say we can't afford an RTX 4090 and our GPU can only reliably generate 30 real frames per second. We just drag this down over here, set to render at 30 FPS, and obviously this is a much degraded experience with visible choppiness, tearing, and input lag. But then with the push of a button, it instantly feels like 240 FPS again, even though we're still running at 30 frames per second. The first step to show you guys what's happening is to go even further and stop rendering new frames altogether. Then enable asynchronous reprojection. Interesting. This is a great demonstration of how the display and user input can be refreshed without receiving a new rendered frame from the GPU. This obviously isn't a great gaming experience given that we're looking at a static picture in a black void and we can't even move our character, but it's very smooth. Let's take things a step further, pun intended. By breaking the on-screen objects into strips and sorting them by their distance from the player, we can actually guess where they're gonna end up relative to the player's input. Again, without rendering a new frame. At zero FPS, things get pretty messy pretty fast, but watch what happens if we have even a little bit more than that. Not bad for 10 frames per second, but the black void is still there, especially if we whip the camera around, and in some ways, it's even more distracting. That's where the next little bit of black magic comes in. The area of your vision that is sharp enough to read text or recognize a human face is only about six to seven degrees. Everything else is peripheral vision, which is relatively blurry, but highly sensitive to motion. That's why this is so annoying, even if I'm still in the sweet spot of your field of view. But there's an easy fix. You can simply stretch out any object that's at the edge of the last rendered frame until a new update is received. And you can see that by filling that void with something, even just a loose approximation of what's supposed to be there, the perceived image quality jumps dramatically. Isn't that wild? Now, of course, at only 10 frames per second, we're gonna be able to break the illusion pretty easily, even by moving the mouse moderately quickly. But going back to the demo we did before, if we boost our frame rate back up to 30, all of a sudden, it's far less noticeable. Unless we look and move at the same time, then we can 
kind of notice that judder. But let's say we ratchet it up to 60 FPS. Oh, now? <laughs> Things are getting pretty convincing here. Then the question is, if this has been around for years and can turn the 60 FPS that your mid-range GPU turns out into a 240 FPS experience, why on earth haven't we been using it? If I had to guess, I'd say because it just didn't occur to anyone that we wanted it, myself included. I mean, when was the last time gamers asked for a compromised form of rendering? The outrage over driver cheats would have been immediate. So async reprojection, it, well, it wasn't developed to help gamers save money or to help GPU manufacturers get more FPS on low-end carts. It was developed out of necessity. In the early days of VR, it was already clear that being tethered to a stationary, expensive, PC was always going to be a friction point for mass adoption. Why does it look like the inside of a vagina? But mobile chipsets had nowhere near the performance they needed to render 90 plus frames per second at greater than full HD resolutions. Performance hasn't been perfect, especially when there's a lot of like particle effects on screen. So they had to do something to bring out lightweight, battery powered headsets that also didn't cause users to projectile vomit within minutes of putting them on. And that's asynchronous reprojection. And over the years, it's gotten really good. Don't take my word for it though. Let's take a more detailed look at the reactions of some of the gamers in our office. I have over 900 hours in Apex Legends <laughs> and over 300 hours in Vermintide 2. I am a competitive FPS player. Uh, I rank in top five to 10% on Apex Legends globally. And I've been a gamer for uh, basically as long as I can remember. I play uh, a lot of video games from FPS to puzzle to anything. I play games on my computer. I game a lot and I'm terrible at it. I play a lot of games. I've helped develop some games. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, I'm gonna say 120. Let's no, see. 90. Okay. I would say one, 140. Yeah, I'm just seeing like the trails. Like I'm seeing things rent, take a while to refresh on the screen. In terms of like frame rate, it doesn't feel that much different. I wanna say it's worse. Anthony. What? Are you using foveated rendering? My gut wants to say that this is the least responsive so far. To me, this feels like 60. Has anything changed? No. No? <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell. It feels the same. Uh, yeah, like I can very clearly tell with the, f with the shadow here, just kind of how blurry those edges are for a split second. From a technical perspective, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm incredibly intrigued. This is, this is super neat. It's so hard to know if if I'm thinking I'm seeing something because I'm looking for it, or if there actually is something different. Like if you really quickly snap between like the player model and that kind of cyan uh, cube, there's definitely a lot of blur going on at like really high speed. Yeah, it's basically the same as last. I can't really tell. I want to say it feels better. This seems a bit better again. If I had to guess about frame rate, I have a suspicion that all the frame rates are the same. Um, when you go really fast, it's bad. That is incredibly annoying. <laughs> I would not want to play like that. Whoa! Okay, clearly you... <laughs> things are, things are, things are popping in and out of existence. I don't know what's real anymore. Uh, I don't know if it's just like, you know, you know how there's um, systems where basically whenever something's being looked at, it's being rendered. But as soon as you're looking away, it gets called, or it's not—it's just not rendered anymore. Um, that's what this feels like, but like on a slow mode. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 no! <laughs> oh! <laughs> what do you mean, better or worse? We'll have the mostly uncut version of those sessions up on floatplane.com if you want to see more. It's pretty funny. But the gist is that not a single one of our test subjects correctly identified the frame rate, no matter what we set it to. In fact, a surprising number of our respondents thought that 60 FPS felt and looked worse than 30 because they started actively looking for the artifacts. Now, to be fair to our test subjects, they're not idiots. It's really hard to tell in person. And that's part of what makes this test so interesting. But why is it so hard to tell? The reason lies in the relationship between frame rate and refresh rate. Frame rate is a measure of how many complete images per second are generated by your GPU. 
the higher your frames per second, the sooner you're gonna get the most up-to-date information, say for example, on the position of your opponents. That also includes though, the results of your inputs. That improves the perceived responsiveness of the gaming experience and is one of the reasons why a high frame rate is so desirable. But the frame rate almost never corresponds to the refresh rate of your monitor. That is, how many times per second it can actually show you a new image. I understand why people confuse the two sometimes. They are similar in the sense that the higher the refresh rate, the sooner you see the results of your mouse movements and your key presses. So they have a similar impact on your gaming experience, but the refresh rate doesn't work to give you new information unless you've got an updated frame. So they, they aren't quite the same. The conventional wisdom for competitive PC gamers before the days of high refresh rate displays was that you wanted to push the frame rate to at least double of what your display was capable of. That should give you an edge over your opponents by having slightly more up-to-date information on the screen. That usually meant targeting about 120 FPS. The idea was that by the time your monitor is finished displaying the current frame, your GPU will have created a more up-to-date frame for the next one than it might have if both of them were locked to 60. This is what we're seeing with async reprojection, but in the other direction. The GPU is running slower, but the user inputs are displayed as soon as the display can show them, even if the GPU hasn't caught up yet. That means that regardless of the real frame rate, input from the mouse remains responsive. And the most common complaint from our test subjects while moving their view at these ridiculously low frame rates wasn't even that the game was laggy or unresponsive, but instead it was the stretching along the edges of our screen. Our test subjects' reactions, by the way, were great when we showed them how the sausage was made. What is this? What the hell is happening? Oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Whoa, okay. Oh my god. This is next level. This is ah! <laughs> it goes to show how frame rate and perception are so heavily tied together. Like yeah. looking at that, I you you would never have guessed that it was it was a 30 before. Obviously it's not perfect. I could get a much better experience with like fancy hardware, but I mean if you can enable this on a lower tier GPU or something, that's like pretty crazy. And what's really cool about this is that it's not just a placebo. Having more responsive inputs even if your frame rate isn't that high, can make a big difference when you're tracking a moving target, say in an FPS game. And this is just the beginning. Comrade Stinger put this demo together in literally an evening, which means that edge cases like kiting a character model are still pretty ugly thanks to all the visual anomalies. But Imagine if the major GPU and game engine designers were to build support for this into their products. NVIDIA is using machine learning to generate whole artificial frames in DLSS 3.0, and that could end up seeming downright silly if all they had to do was use their machine learning to guess at what should be just outside that frame that hasn't been generated yet, or what might be on the side of that sliced up model that you're kiting around. However, it's not a magic bullet either. Even if async reprojections artifacts could be nearly eliminated, racing games, MOBAs, and other games with mostly fixed viewpoints might actually benefit more from traditional rendering at variable refresh rates, like with G-Sync or FreeSync. So like variable refresh rates or frame generation for that matter, this technique is just one tool in a developer's toolbox that if it catches on and matures, could be used to improve responsiveness and Here's another cool one, also minimize power draw. Imagine this on a future console, like a Nintendo Switch 2 or a Steam Deck 2. You know, a device where maybe you could run at 60 FPS, but you're routinely capped to 30 in order to save battery. Thumbsticks and especially gyro controls could be made far more responsive with almost no increase in power draw. Suffice it to say, I'm extremely excited to see where this and technologies like it will take us in the future, especially in a world where GPU prices have risen to the point where they're just unreasonable and gaming on top tier hardware has become less and less accessible. Just like I'm always accessible to segue to our sponsor. 
Pulseway. When your network devices require attention, wouldn't it be nice to have control while you're out running errands instead of having to sit there in front of a computer? Well, Pulseway offers a convenient solution to these sorts of dilemmas. Their all-in-one platform allows you to monitor all your servers, computers, and network devices from any mobile phone or tablet, so you can respond quickly no matter where you are, whether that's running scripts, checking CPU temperatures, pushing through updates, or even running diagnostics on that pesky printer that never cooperates. You know which one I'm talking about, all of them. They also offer a hefty suite of automation options for critical IT tasks or simply shutting down your home systems when the babysitter needs help putting the kids to bed. It works with Windows, Mac OS, and even Linux, which means more control for you. And since you can do all of this on the go, you'll have more time for the things you love while Pulseway handles the rest. Try a no-commitment free trial of Pulseway by following the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this, go check out our recent video on DLSS 3.0 for more on this kind of frame rate might not really matter in the future technology. It's a little rough around the edges, but hey, so was DLSS and FSR 1.0, and look how far they've come.